Hey you loopers, we're back with another video. Today it's a repair video. The HP 8112A. It's a 50 megahertz pulse generator. This was purchased as faulty from eBay. Let's take a look, see what the symptoms are. When we first powered this unit on, it was working absolutely fine. After about five minutes, it would fail with error 52. This display here would show E.52. Error 52 relates to the burst counter test. It's actually the last power on test that it performs before it's up for operation. As soon as I've decided to record this video, this unit is working absolutely faultless, almost. We still get some symptoms. Let's see if we can trigger it. This unit should power on with the previous state that it was. There is a reference to that in the manual. The instrument battery has failed. The standard parameter set is selected. And that's what we're seeing here. If I make a change, enable the output, if I power this off, back on again, and we can see it's actually defaulted now as a separate repair item this top segment here has failed as well so we will be taking a look at that in the future due to the corrosion this area was an area that I started to look at surrounding this battery particularly with it being 1.2 volts there's two RAM chips that are fitted and I got the data sheet for those and what I noticed was if we look in the data sheet the Low VCC data retention characteristics, the minimum is 2 volts, which doesn't match with the 1.2 volts on this battery. The other unusual item, if we take a look at the data sheet for the HP 8112, look at the schematic. Over in this area here, the battery is listed as 3 volts. In the event of the power supply switching off, we will power the RAM via the backup battery, which is via this circuit here. We've actually got a current limiting resistor and a shock key diode. Now, to me, that offers no capability for recharging that NICAD battery. And certainly the cell voltage of the NICAD battery is too low for data retention. So what I suspect is happening is when you power off the unit, the RAM is getting corrupted because it can't maintain the minimum retention voltage. You could potentially have garbage in there. When the unit repowers on, who knows what parameters is going to be returned by the CPU. I think in some instances, it makes no sense of it and it loads the default settings. In other circumstances, I've seen the unit power on with a blank display. There is another possibility that this has been modified in the fact that instead of a shock key diode, we've now got a Zena diode and a charging resistor, but all of this part of the circuitry looks untouched to me. So I'm going to go for the fact that this is probably a Friday afternoon calibration repair and somebody's just fitted this NICAD 1.2 volt cell because it was the first one that sort of fitted on the board. I purchased a replacement cell. This is a three volt lithium cell. It's the closest size that I could get. I think originally it should be a two thirds AA. This is about half an AA size, but it is slightly higher. So it'll be kind of a tight fit between the board and the top of the case, but it's the best that we could go with for a quick delivery time. The cell voltage matches the schematic at three volts. What we're going to do, we're going to take out the microprocessor board. We're going to remove this cell. We're going to clean up any corrosion as best we can. We're going to refit the new cell, fit the motherboard back in, power on and test. This is the microprocessor board now out of the pulse generator. This is the battery that we're going to remove. This is an interface chip. This is the main processor unit, which is a 6802. This is the program memory. 
And over here is the two RAM chips. Again, on the side of the board, it doesn't look as if there's been any change to that circuitry. So I do think it is just a case that this battery has been fitted incorrectly at some point in a repair or calibration process. I give this Engineer Tools Solder Sucker SSO2 a go on this one. This is the old battery removed, 1.2 volt NICAD cell. I'm going to give this area a clean up, try and stop that corrosion, get ready to fit the new battery. This board now cleaned up. The underside is in really good condition. Totally happy with that. You can see that's cleaned up nicely. There's no corrosion on the pads. Top side of the board hasn't fared as well. You can see this pad here. Some of the copper has been eaten away. And the same with the top pad. There is some corrosion in this area here. This component here, which I suspect is a resistor array, again, there's some corrosion, some of the pins there. So I think if this works, I might come back and revisit this and replace that part there. But for now, we're just going to fit the battery. and Let's see if that alleviates the symptoms. Next task is to work out our best strategy for fitting this making sure we get it connected the right way round, fit it into place as best we can on that circuit board there as well. So the replacement battery has been fitted. There was a little bit of artistic creativity required. There was some corrosion on the pad here. And with this not quite being the right size, what I've decided to do was to locate it on the negative side through the pad hole. And on the positive side, I've bent the two terminals over at 90 degrees and brought them forward each side onto this pad and secured them with uh, probably a little bit more solder than what I'd like. But I want to make sure that this is going to stay in place. And on the underside, again, I've cleaned those pads up. They were very relatively unaffected by any corrosion. So I'm happy with that. On this side here, we have got two holes just on the underside the there, both sides. I'm going to use a cable tie, which I think was the original intention on the board to secure this. So I'm just going to hold that down with the cable tie and that'll stop it actually going anywhere in the event of a drop or anything like that. We'll certainly keep it in place on the board, which is what we want. There's this cable tie fitted now. That should provide some restraint on the battery and keep it in place on the circuit board. Now I'm going to refit this board, test the operation. Fitted the boards back in. There was a, an interesting connection down here where the power comes from the main board. Up the cables onto the processor board be taking a look at that at some point. One of the crimp connectors didn't look ideal. I've assembled the boards and for testing and fault finding the boards actually fix on the case. It's actually a really really good arrangement. We power the unit back up and it is functional. We have still got that missing segment on there so we'll try and get that sorted but everything seems operational we're going to power off the unit and see if these settings are remembered one of the things that should be happening is that battery backup should be maintaining the minimum retention voltage on the ram chips let's see if that's the case Back up and operational again. It always defaults to no output, and that's to protect any equipment which may be connected to this uh, test appliance. It looks like this is good to go. I'm going to keep testing this unit over a period of time. We're going to see if any fault appears. 
a new fold or the existing folds again. If anything does happen, keep a look out on this channel. There'll be a part two to repair that. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.